it needs your commitment, it needs your dedication in studies. Um, so, what I might do is, this system is still um, not working properly, but um, I, so the first uh, today lectures, I'll start with the introduction of the course, and then we will do a lecture number one on language of mathematics. Right, so all the lecture notes already uploaded on Canvas. So you have access to Canvas if you enroll in Math 1110. So Canvas got everything from the lecture notes, okay, and the details of the quiz, so I'll talk about that in a minute. Right, and then also the workshop materials, they'll be on Canvas as well. And the extra exercise that I call task book, okay, for each topic of the lectures is already on the um, Canvas. Yes, and regularly I will be making announcements on Canvas, right, and the announcement will also go to your emails. So please regularly check announcement on Canvas or announcement that has been sent to your UON email address, right? Because I'll be sending information about the quizzes, the weekly quizzes that start next week. I'll be sending you information about midterm tests, the practice midterm tests, the final exam, the practice final exam, and other information that you will need to know throughout the course. All right, please check your email. Okay, um, course outline is already on Canvas, right? You must read the course outline because that got all the information about the lecture schedules, right? And the assessment tasks that includes when you will do, when, when you'll be doing the quizzes, when you'll be doing the midterm test, when the exams is coming, right, and how many percentage of those. All the details of this course is in the course outline. Okay, make sure that you read that. So my name, as you probably know, is Natalie, right, Natalie Tomatana, or, you know, if you search me up, you will see my Thai name. I'm from Thailand, right, originally, so I'm Thai. So, and then you can see that my accent is you know, strong accent, and sometimes you might not understand me and oh, I speak too fast, raise your hand up and say, Nali, I don't understand, can you repeat that? Can you slow down? All right, don't feel shy, because I'll be asking you to maybe doing some answering question, you know, during the lectures. Okay, just feel free to stop me if you want me to repeat any materials in the lectures. To be honest, this is my third year teaching this course right, in Math 1110, and this is the first time that I'm teaching this best to fast. Because in 2020, 2021, I'm teaching this course online. So this is the first time we're doing it in face to fast, so it'll be interesting, right? I'll get the energy from you, you get the energy from me, so I hope that will be fun and um, you enjoy this course. Right, so this system to learning, loading, anyway. Um, my office is in the SR building, Right, all this material, all this I mentioned here is in the canvas, you can look it up. So it's in SR222. You can come to see me anytime. Usually if I'm in my office, um, the doors is always open. So either you can just pop by and ask questions, right? Sometimes I'm not in my office, best to email me and um, say, hey, Natalie, I want to drop by this and this at this time. I'm very friendly, doors always open, you can come to talk to me at any time. And if you, are, I have, if you had me in the class before, and you will know that I'm really quick to reply to emails as well. So if you start on any math questions, all right, or any admin size of the course, so please feel free to email. Okay, but try not to do in the late night, okay? During work hours is good. So you can drop by my office, email me, or, um, but try not to leave things until late. Like for example, the test is tomorrow. Try not to come the day before, right? So try to be organized and then come to see me in advance, especially if you struggle, right? 
email me if you have any concern, any things that you have to go and you're going to miss this and meet that, miss that. Please just email me to let me know. You don't think that you just one out of 200 students, but I take every one of you seriously, right? So don't just think that I am here and Nali won't care if I'm just going to miss the class. I do, right? So, um, and I really appreciate if you have any difficulty and contact me straight away because you cannot leave until the end of the semester and then email me, Nali, I'm struggle because I can't help you if we're that late in the um, semester. Okay, and um, I guess all of you here already has the, you know, pass the requisite, right? There's a requisite to enter Maths 1110. Okay, so, and I will assume that you have those knowledge already, okay, that you learn from Math 1002 or from your high school or for your, from some of you from um, Open Foundation, from Enabling Program, right? For international student, you have some background. So a lot of it, I will just base on your assume, I assume that you already know that information, but if you want me to repeat anything, just, you know, raise your hands up and say, Nali, can you explain that a bit more? So we can go to that as well, or you can come to me um, in the, your times. Um, there's just topics and schedules that's already in the, on Canvas. So for example, today we're just doing a little bit of intro. Then I will talk about lectures of mathematics, lectures, I mean, language of mathematics. And then um, lectures on Fridays will have function one. So um, I can't show you screen slides here because this system is not loading. Um, anyway, so you have those um, topics in the course outline and also the schedules is in Canvas. If you click schedules from the home page of Canvas, so you see the schedules, what I will be covered in each week and each week what topics that you will be doing in your quiz. Okay. Now, the lectures, is, both lectures are in this room, right? So we have lecture today, it's on Tuesday, 10 to 12, and then we have our lectures again, 9 to 11 on Friday. So both lectures are in this room. And lecture attendance is not compulsory, right? Because all the lectures will be recorded, put it on Canvas. But having said that, if you attend the lectures, you don't have to spend extra time and try to catch up. Right? And you can stay on top of the materials at all times. And it's good that you come and then I usually get here, you know, on time or early. So if you have any question, you can come and chat to me before the lectures or you can come and chat to me at the end of the lectures as well. Right? So attending lectures have shown that you do well in the assessment task. Okay, so and the lecture note, lecture material, lecture recording will be on Panopto in the Canvas. Okay, and in week two to six and week eight to 13, this is on the course outline, okay, I'm just summarizing this for you, right? So in week two to six, week eight to 13, you will have workshops, right? Because, and this is a 1000 level course, so your workshop attendant is compulsory, right? And if you look in the course outline, you will see that you need to attend at least 70%, right, of the workshop to be able to pass the course. This is not me saying it, this is the university rules, okay, so I have to obey by them and I take this seriously, right? So if you're gonna miss the workshop, Okay, so in the workshop, you have to go in to your enroll. Have you enrolled in the workshop for this course? You all enrolled for the workshop, right? So each one of you have to select the workshop and you have to attend that workshop because you're gonna have the app, right? That's a check-in app. And once you go into your workshop, five minutes past the time that you start, you can start check-in, right? And if for some reason you cannot attend the workshop, you need to check in during that time, but you can give the reason why you missed the, the workshop. Or for any concern, just email me. Okay, so we have 11 workshops 
meaning that you can miss four, okay, to get your 70%, right? So you need to attend at least seven out of 11, okay, to pass the requirement of the workshop compulsory attendance. Now, in your workshop, you will have a de two demonstrators, right? So it's a big workshop, you will have a two demonstrators, and they will encourage you to work on the whiteboard. Okay, and the reason we want you to work on the whiteboard is that because there's a lot of you, right? And so it's easier for the demonstrators to help you, to guide you to working, right, on the mathematics so they can spot, hey, um, James, you make some mistake. Can you, um, you know, fix that? Uh, or you can just look on the other side and say, hey, Riley, oh, that, she does it that way. So I'm going to do it, follow her. You know, so those, you kind of help each other as well. So it's a group work because you can chat to the person next to you. You can look across the room, right? But if you, um, and also you will be given the, lecture, um, the workshop sheet, okay? But this semester, what I do is that I will also post the workshop sheet ahead of time on the canvas. So you, if you feel, you know, you don't want to waste papers, you can bring your laptop or your um, tablet and you can open your um, worksheet on the tablet as well while you're working. But if you don't have the tablet, that doesn't matter or computer doesn't matter, you still can come and we still give you a, a handout of the workshop sheet. And then so you can then, but the marker and the whiteboard make markers will be given to you, right, in the, during the workshop time. Now, if you, um, you know, a bit worried about the hygiene of these markers and the eraser, feel free to bring your own okay, marker and eraser to the workshop. Right. Um, yeah, so make sure that you have the My in app to check in or, um, you know, to check yourself in and also if you can't check in, if you can't come, just give the reason on that app as well. And lots of people just turn up and then check in and leave. Please don't do that. You spend a lot of money here, right? You spend a lot of money, um, not you, the government, but you have to pay back later. But there's a lot of money that you studying here. Please make use of us as much as possible, right? And you're here to pass the course, and I want you all to pass the course, so please make use of us. So try to participate and do those workshop cheat. Take it seriously. Okay, um, the pass, we have the pass program for this course, right? On Friday, Ronan Walker, he's your pass leader, so he will be here on Friday to talk about the pass program. Okay, so um, anyway, and pass um, start in week two. So now we're talking about the assessment item. So you have, this is loading, can you believe it? Um, we have um, 30 minutes, I mean not 30 minutes, we have quizzes for 30%, right? And mid semester test, 30%, final exam, 40%. Now the final exam will be done during the, um, you know, the ex formal exam period at the end of the semester, and it will contain the material from week one to week 12. Now for the mid semester test, right, you will be doing it during your workshop in week seven, okay, during your workshop times, we don't do workshop in week seven, we do the missed semester test instead, right? And so um, I will put more information on Canvas when the times come. So it will comprise uh, 15 multiple choice questions and two written answer questions, and that 30%. Now, in week two to six, and week eight to 13, so the week that you have workshops, you will also have the quizzes, right? And these quizzes is an online quizzes. You can access them on Canvas, okay? So if you go onto your, tab, onto your table of menu size on Canvas, you can go to assignment, and then you will see the quizzes. You can click on that, and then you would come to assessment page, and then you can access your quiz from there. 
All right. So、um, the first quiz is next week. You get more information from me. Okay, when the times come. So the quiz. So you can see the eleven quizzes, right? And then thirty percent in total. So each quiz is about two point something percent. You might see two point something percent. It's little, right? But several of them is actually a lot. Okay, and I can tell you that a lot of students pass the course because they're doing the quizzes. They just pass the course because they done the they they make sure that they're doing the quizzes, right? Because some of you miss out to pass the course by just two percent. Right, and that two percent can just come from doing the quiz. Right, so please make sure that you're doing the quiz every week. So the quizzes will open from 11 a.m. on Friday, right, and it will close at about midnight on Sunday. So I give you、um, Saturday, Sunday, and 11, from 11 a.m. on Friday. Okay, so to do those quiz, so I know that some of you are working. Some of you have other commitment, but I hope that three, almost three days, and nights, will give you enough time to do the quiz, right? And if you have an RAP, some of you have a reasonable adjustment plans, please send to me as soon as possible so I can just adjust your quiz time and assessment time according to your reasonable adjustment plan. Okay, so the quizzes is. Had six multiple choice questions, and I give you 30 minutes, and that is plenty of times. Okay, the the reason I give you plenty of time, so you can think of it, you got five minutes per questions as open book, right? So the reason I give you that plenty of time because some of you might have internet problem, internet issue, reloading, and things like that. So that's why I give you plenty of time so you don't feel stressed. Okay, so I hope that you will. Things that 30 minutes is plenty of times, right? And I mean, as we go along, you know, the quiz might get a bit harder. But I still think that, as past experience, 30 minutes you can do that quite easily. Okay. And、um, even though we, so the quiz will be open book, right? But I should say that even though open book, you can, you know, use the lecture notes, lecture materials, other、um, content, other materials that you like to do your your quiz, right? But having said that, your work should be your own work, right? So I, I this is individual task, so I expect that it will be your own work, okay? And、um, for the Mr. and Mr. test, that will be face to face. So I'm sure that will be your own work, and the final exam for this semester, it will be face to. I aim to be a face to face exams as well. Yes. 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 So you will be、um, given more information closer to the date, right? So you will allow to cite the A4 summary sheet to bring to your test, Mr. Semester test, and the exam. Right, you don't, and、um, you, I say that you don't need calculators, so the calculator will not be allowed. So don't get panicking, right? Because all things that you need to know, you can put in the summary sheet, and a lot of time it not involves number crunching. It about solving, you know, solving some math problems, and it's not you know number crunching ideas. Right, so you don't need a calculator. All you need to do, if you worry about、uh, what is size of 30 degree, what is cos of 60 degrees, write them down in your summary sheet, okay, and then bring to your test. Okay, and as you might have read the、um, the course outline, so I have the right to conduct oral interview, and、um, in all assessment that you do. So, for example. I might conduct oral interview after we have missed the missed test or the final exam. Just you know, just in case if I see any misconduct, and I want to have a chat to you to clear it out. So you might expecting the email from me. Okay, so just letting you know that. And in the past, I have also because we do an online exam, so I've done 20 of them in the past last semester. But because of we doing the 
face-to-face uh, -face mid semester test and face-to-face -face final exam. So I hope that I don't need to, you know, conduct those oral interview with you. Right. And we nearly the end here about the introduction. I'm sorry, this is still not working. Um, we have um, at worst circumstance applications, right? So. Have anyone heard or launched an adverse circumstance application form before? Okay, now, this is the case, for example, you are going to miss um, any quizzes, right? If you, for example, feel six and you cannot do the quizzes, if you feel six and you cannot um, come to the test, if your car breaks down and then you can't, you can't come to the test, for example, or you've got some important job that you have to be, that you cannot take the midterm test, for example. So any adverse circumstance, you must submit the adverse circumstance application. And you might say, how do I apply for that? Go to the UON website, search adverse circumstance application, and it will pop up, click on that, and it will tell you on how to apply. It's basically, it's an online form. Okay, on all you, it doesn't need at the moment, it doesn't need doctor certificate. All I need is some statement from you or an evidence why you missing that particular assessment test. Now, before the work in previous years, the workshop attendant, you have to submit adverse circumstance if you miss them. But because of now the check-in app, right, has been updated, so you can just check, um, you know, check yourself unavailable in the check-in app for the workshop attendance, so you don't need to send me the adverse circumstance application for that. But for the test and the quizzes, you still need to submit that. And I appreciate that, that you can do it within three days of the due date, right? Three days of the due date of those assessment items. Right. Okay, now, and after all, if you have any difficulty, just contact me, all right? Just contact me by emails, okay? Or just pop in my office. Now, this thing's still not loaded, so what I'll do now is just have five minute break, okay? And this is the time so that you can ask me questions, or if you don't want to, we can have five minute breaks. Any questions from me? Anything at all about assessment items, workshops? Yes. No, you have to, it's not linked to Canvas. Unfortunately, there's something that the Canvas people try to link it up, but it's a different system. Just go on the adverse circumstance application, and then you will see that there's a button to press, and then how to apply, and then it will take you there, but you need to submit this um, supporting evidence. So if you don't have the doctor's certificate, for example, you feel sick, right? You can just write a statement that I'm feeling sick and I don't want to come because I don't want to, in, in, you know, affect other people and things like that. So that would be fine, okay? But, uh, yeah, you just need to provide those statements, okay? And I hope it will be a true statement as well. Okay, we'll just have a five minute, come back at um, 10.30. So hopefully this will be... Um, Uploaded. Any other questions? Say it again. No workshop this week. Yeah, workshop start next week.
Um, I'm not sure what's going on and um, still not loading. I guess we will have, you have the lecture notes with you. If you don't have, don't worry. So if, you, um, if you have the computer, you can open up your lecture notes. Okay, but as I say today, only talking about the language of mathematics, right? And um, just the introductions about the notations about the set, okay? And just talk about the basic concepts of this, of, you know, that we are going to use for other lectures. Okay, now, first of all, we are going to talk about numbers, right? And so, first start with a set of numbers. So, anyone know about a set of numbers? What are there? Feel free to, you know, shout it out. Yes? Start from something simple first. Yes. Yes, that's right. Natural number, thank you. Like, think about, you know, when you were little, as you're growing up, your parent teaching you to count, right? Sometimes you start counting from zeros, or you can count, like, you know, think about the, the children one years old. Mom and dad will teach you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that we call the natural numbers, right? So that, what the, that's the first set of numbers that we learn since we're growing up. So when I talk about the set of numbers, right? So you've seen this, it's a bracket. Okay, so I have to do things by hand. I'm sorry about this. So it's the bracket, right? And then you put a number inside with the comma in between them. So for example, when I talk about natural numbers, which is a set of n, right? Set, when we talk about the name of the set, I use the capital letter, right? So a set of n is equal a curly bracket. And inside it contains a natural number. It could be 0, comma 1, comma 2, comma 3, comma 4, so on and so forth. So in some textbook, the natural numbers are starting from 0, but in some textbook, the natural number is starting from 1. Okay, so, um, you know, either way, that's okay. that's okay. So we can adopt it from um, zero, okay, for this, let's say for this lectures, for this course, we're gonna talk about the natural numbers, it's a set that contain, containing zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. So it's an infinite set, right, because it can keep going. The numbers of the element in the set is infinities because it can keep going. And then, when you know the natural numbers, the next thing we know is Integer. Yes, that's right. You know the one, two, three, and then when you go into the primary school, they're teaching you minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, so on and so forth. And together with the natural numbers, that is called the set, the set of integer. Okay, the set of integer is using the name, the, the name of the set, we use it as set. I'll post up some of the, my notes up online, okay? But just, it's from the lecture notes anyway. So we use the letter Z to contain a set of integer. So you can have a curly bracket, and you can do like dot, 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 comma, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. Okay, and again, the integer, a set of integer is infinite. Okay, set of infinite numbers in there, so that because you can keep going onto the negative side and keep going onto the positive side. Okay, and then after that, we also know about the set of, you said it before, rational, rational numbers, that's right. So going up into maybe year five and year six, you started talking about like one over two, three over two, right? Um, one over seven. So the rational numbers are the set of number that you can write is as a ratio up to into integer, right? So it can be minus one over six, minus three over two, right? So that is a set of irrational numbers. Okay, so, um, so the rational numbers, that set we call it Q. 
instead of Q, I usually you do a curly bracket, say set of Q, the rational number equal to A divided by B, where A and B is your integer, a member of the integer set. And B cannot be zero because it's, the div it's divided by that. A is divided by B, right? So B can't be zero. I'm sorry about this, right? So, but this is just um, the first lecture, so I hope we don't have these problems again. Now, and you can see that so far, the natural numbers is a subset of integer, right? You remember, you know subset? Everyone knows subset because every member of natural numbers is also a member of integer and every member of integer is also a member of the rational number set. Right? So therefore, the natural number is a subset of integer and it's also a subset of the set of the rational numbers. So what is the next one? Uh, Before that. Think of pi. Yes, that's right. You know irrational numbers? So irrational numbers are the number that you cannot write it as a ratio of A and B. Right? So for example, pi. Now you can say, hey Nali, but pi is 22 over 7, but that's not correct. Pi is not equal to 22 over 7. It's just pi it can be approximate by 22 over 7. Okay, and you use a curly equal sign to represent approximate. Right? So if you can write the number as the ratio of the two integers, so that number is the irrational number, like pi, like e, you know those e? Yeah, so those are the irrational numbers. And you see them all the time when you're dealing with circles and geometric structures. Okay, so the next thing, so you can see now the natural number is a subset of integer, it's a subset of the rational numbers, right? And now, the rational number together with the irrational numbers. When I said together, that used the union sign. Remember like the U shape? I don't even have the things here to write. The U shape sign, that union, Okay, so the rational number union with the irrational numbers that give you a real numbers. And that real numbers are the real number line that you learn, okay? On the real number line, usually you do like zero, one, two, three, minus one, two, three, minus one, minus two on the other side. But actually, all the real numbers can be put in the real number line. Okay, so the real numbers are together with the rational and irrational number. So we use the union set of the union. Right? Now, later on, you will learn about complex numbers in this course. Okay, so the complex numbers, you probably haven't seen in your high school or in other courses, but we will touch on that a bit later. So this is a new numbers, new set of numbers. Okay, the, I should mention that the real number, we use the capital letter R to denote the set of real numbers. Okay, and you will see that set of real number, it will be a subset of the complex numbers. And a complex number set, we denote by C. I'll come back to that in maybe week three or four about the complex numbers. Now, um, when you have to set, right, there's a union sign, right, that we talk about. It's a set, okay, the two set. When I talk about union, so I take the mem member of both set to be, so I can use the operator called union to re create a new set. Let's say if I have set A is equal to the set of one and two, set B is having the member of three and four. Okay, when I union them, I create a new set. And that set will contain the member of both set A and set B. Right? So it will be a set new set will be having the member one, two, three, four. Okay, everyone's still with me? Okay. 
You just have to use your imagination here and based on what you learned in the past. And then we talk about intercept, right? Remember, the union is like the U shape. The intercept is like the upside down U, right? The intercept is just taking a member that is the member of set A and a member of set B. So let's say that if I'm talking about set A has a member of one, two, and set B have a member of two and four, so the, the intercept will give you a new set, and that A intercept B will give you just a set of number two, because the number two are both in set A and set B. Yeah? Okay. And then we also have a null set, right? A null set or an empty set. Okay, so that means that there's no member in that set. Okay, so, and um, there is a thing like a fine, letter fine, that can represent a null set or an empty set. Okay, um, the other things that we probably should talk about is when you write a member, like if I say set A have a member of one and two, and I can say one is a member of set A, so that's like a letter E, right? So it's just like that. Okay, so one is a member of set A. So I said one is that little curly little E there, and then set A. Okay, any question about the set? Just, you know, quite straightforward. All right, so the next thing is that um, we talk about is equation. Okay, so here, you know, we're gonna solve equations. So when you talk about equation, it has the equal size. Okay, when you have an equal size, okay, so that is equation, for example, for example x plus one equals six. That's an, that's an equation because it had that equal sign, right? So if I just say x plus two, that is not an equation. It's just, you know, a, a, a phrase or a, it's not even a statement because a statement had to have, you know, an equal sign or have to have a verb and, and nouns and objects. So, um, so it just, x plus two is not an equals, that doesn't have equal sign. So x plus two alone is not an equation. So if you say x plus two equals three, then that's called equations, right? And then you will see that in the lecture note, there is this error, one side error, right? That one side error is called implication or imply, right? If I say x plus one equals three, and I can write the arrow sign that x must be equal to two. Okay, so x plus one equal three imply that x is equal to two, right? So, so basically the implication size is that the statement A imply statement B, or a fact A imply facts B. So I can say that I eat a lot, imply that I gain weight. So, okay, so it has to, it doesn't need to be a, it has to be a statement. You can't just say X imply two. That doesn't make sense, right? Because X is not a statement, it's not a fact. So you can't say X imply two. You can't just say X plus two imply three. That doesn't make sense. It has to be a statement and then imply the other statement. Is that clear? So it had to be a fact. Imply other facts. And then that's just a one arrow sign. And then you also have the two arrow sign. Okay, the two arrow, okay, on both sides. So this means that facts A imply facts B. And also facts B imply facts A. Right, so if I say x plus one equal three, imply that x equal to two. 
Okay, so if I can say that if x equal to 2, that also implies that x plus 1 equal to 3. Yeah. So it had to be true on both sides. Okay, so vice versa, or if and only if. Okay, right, so it had to be true on both sides. And later on, you see in the lecture note that is this equal sign with the colon in the front. See that one before? There's a colon with an equal sign that is being defined. And it's used a lot in coding, right? If you define something, Okay, so for example, I define that x equal yellow. I say x colon equal yellow. So I mean, I'm defined. I'm defined that x equal to one. Okay, I can define that, right? That I define x equal to one. So you might you you could see that, but usually when we talk about things in this lecture, you will say that okay, I assume x equal to one, so I just write x equal to one. But don't be surprised if you see those colon. And the equal sign that's mean I assign or I define some value to that. And you'll see that in a lot more when you do like if you do computer science courses. Now, and I talked about that before, letter pi, right? We know that pi is an irrational number, right? So pi cannot be equal to 3.14. Because pi is actually 3.14, blah 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 blah. Can anyone recite pi? Nah, I can I can only 3.14. My daughter asked me, Mom, can you recite pi? I said 3.14. She said, ah, I can do better. Anyway, um, so when you talk about pi, don't write pi equal 3.14 because that's not true. Right? Pi does not equal 3.14. It's actually 3.14. Keep going, keep going, keep going on. So what you write about that is you said pi approximate sign. The approximate sign is like a curly, right? It's like a curly equal sign. Yeah, this means I approximate pi by 3.14. Now, if you want to write an equal sign, you can say pi is equal to 3.14, but you have to have to have bracket up to two decimal point. You can do it that way, or you can say pi equal to 3.14159292. Six five three five. I wrote it here, um, and then you have to say in the bracket up to ten digits. Okay, but just you know, in general, just write pi is approximate by some three point one four. Okay, just be careful on that because in the quizzes you're going to see something like this. So the quizzes, just, you know, the question will come from the lecture notes and also from the lectures. And I usually, you know, you come to lectures. You see that I, you know, give you tricks and tips about the quizzes, as well. So that's one thing. So you know, coming to lectures, the benefit of that. Okay. Now um, you should be able to do the task questions in the lecture notes if you have them. But I'll go through them when that um, things is starting, or if it's not starting today, uh, we go through them on Friday lectures. Okay. All right. Now, looking back at the set notation again, going back to set, right? So I can write set as equal to, like, for example, set A is equal to the set of one, two, three, four, five, right? Or I can write set B is fish, dog, cat, frog, an animal name. Set, member of set can be anything, right? But so far, we're talking about numbers. But that's okay because we're going to use a lot just the number as a member of set. But in fact, you know, member of set can be anything. It can be animals' name. It can be color names. It can be really anything when you define a set, right? And then if you write the set out explicitly, right? So, for example, I said set A is given by a set of one, two, three, four. That means I'm using a roster notation. When I talk about roster notation, is that I'm giving the member of the set explicitly. Like for example, I said set B is equal to cat and fish. Right? So it means that I'm giving you the set member explicitly. That's called roster notation. Okay, so I can write out as set A is one, two, three, four, five. That's a natural numbers. 
Okay, so I write it L, the member explicitly that called the roster notation. The other notation that we can write set is called set builder notation. This is all in the lecture notes. Okay, so set builder notation. For example, I can write set A is equal a set of two times x. Right? So you can think in your head, this is actually a set of even numbers. Right? So, so if I said a set A is a set that a member is given by two times x. Right? Where x is a natural numbers. So and then you can say that this is the set builder notation. But if you're going to write this out explicitly, okay, that will be comprising 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, so on and so forth. So, or for example, I can just write, like for example, we do the ir irrational numbers, right? I said rational numbers are built by set of A divided by B, where A's and B's are integer. Right, so that is a set builder notation, right? Because I'm not giving out the member explicitly. I just given a formula or the condition on how you write the set. Are you with me still? With that, good. Like for example, I can say that set n, right? Set set a, for example, is equal to x, where x is a natural number. So I can generate set a to actually be a natural numbers, but I don't have to write out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Because I'm just saying set A is equal to X, where X is a natural numbers. So I just give out the formula instead of writing out explicitly the member of the set. And that is called the way you write that set. It's called the set builder notation. Okay. Now, we are also talking about the numbers of set. Right? The numbers of element in the set is like your magnitude, like an absolute. Like if I have set A equal to 1 and 2, the numbers of set are just using the absolute values of A, like absolute size, okay, of A is equal to 2 because my set has only two members, which is equal to 1 and 2. Right? So I can say that the absolute of A or the number of element in set A equal to 2. Now answer me this, if I have set B, is my set B contain one, one, two, three. What is the number of element in this set? One, one, two, three. Now you said four, who else said three? Who else said three? Okay, who else said four? You can talk, you know, like the talk. Um, so the correct answer is three, because one and one are basically the same, right? So you only count them once, okay? So just note that, right? One, if I, you have a member of the set, right? And if it's just exactly the same, you count them one, but sometimes it trick you. They write it out twice, but if they're exactly the same. But note that, okay, if I have a set A, go back, imagine in your head, I have a set A, right, it's a curly bracket, okay, in the set. And the member of this set contain set of one, a member of this set A contain a set of one, and one, two, three. How many members of this set? A set of one, one, two, three is a member of this set A. One, two, three, and a set of one in this set. A set of one within the set. One, two, three, and a set of one. How many? Okay, think, think, sorry, again. Okay, I have a set A, and just imagine the big curly bracket. Okay, and in this set, I have member one, member called one, member called two, and member called three. And I have a set of one within this set two. Okay. So what I say? Four. That's correct. Because the set of 
one and one are different, a set can contain a subset. A set can a member of set can be a set as well. Right? So a set within a set is a totally different member. Like for example, I have the curly bracket one inside this this big set. Okay, so that member curly bracket one, the set of one, one, two, three, so I got four. Okay, so the one and the set of one are different member of the set. Okay, but if I have just one and one, they're the same. But if I have the curly bracket of one and the curly bracket of one, they're the same. But if it's one and the curly bracket one, they're different. Okay, so in that case, your member will be four. Now, what about that empty set? How many member of the set? Yes, all right. All right, any questions? Now, one more thing I want to talk about is the way you write the numbers, the intervals of numbers, okay? So you might have seen this in your high schools or in other math course that you've done. Remember that you have some time you see like the interval A is in B, and sometimes you see the soft bracket, right? The soft bracket between them. Sometimes you see the hard bracket, okay, at the end. Sometimes you see one soft bracket, one hard bracket, right? Sometimes you see a hard bracket, soft bracket on this side, a hard bracket on that side. Do you know what that means? Yep. Very good, thank you. Now, let me repeat what you said. So, let's talk about soft bracket on each side. If I said I have a set, this is a set of numbers, right, that contain within this number line. So, think, you imagine your number line, right? And I'm going to say that I'm talking about the set of numbers that contain within one and three, okay? Now, you imagine in your head you have a number line. Right? And you think of, of number one and number three. Okay? And now I'm going to put the soft bracket onto one and three. One comma three. Right? Think about that in your head. Now, if I put the soft bracket on this side, both sides of this one and three, it means that this set contains every number between one and three, but does not contain the one and three on the either side. Yes? You clear with that? So if I do a soft bracket of zero and one, so this is a set. Okay, I can say set A is equal the soft bracket on both sides of zero and one. Right? But this set contain every number and that's an infinite number in between zero and one, right? Because you will have an you will have um, you know irrational, irra irrational, not irrational and non-irrational number within those set. Okay, even you thought you thought of zero and one as small section, but actually it contain infinite numbers within those set. Right? If I do soft bracket, it means this set contain all number between zero and one but not contain zero and one. So you can put the hole, okay, you can put the hole. If you draw a number line, so it means that you lie up between zero and one, but you put the circle with the hole into zero and one, yeah? Do dancing here. Now, if you have a hard bracket or a square bracket on both sides of these numbers, if I talk about one and three, Okay, and I put the hard bracket or the square bracket, one comma three, the hard bracket, write that down, right? So it means that this is a set as well, right? It's a set that contains all the number between one and three and one and three as well, right? The hard bracket is mean that it contains those two numbers at the end too. So if you draw this number line, you get one and three there, right? So when you draw it, you lie up, 
Okay, you draw the dark line in between one and three, and you put the field circle at one and three. Okay, that notify that that is a set that contains all the number from one to three and including one and three as well. Okay, does that, does that make sense? Yep, those in the back. Yes, good. All right, now if you have a soft bracket, let's say a soft bracket on this side and a soft bracket on that side and a hard bracket on this side, just think of it from, from one to three again, right? If I do a soft bracket at one and a hard bracket at three, which means that this is a set again that contains all the number from one to three, right? But it's not including one because it's soft there. It doesn't include one, but it includes the number three because I have the hard bracket here. So if you were to draw a picture of the number line, you will do a line between one to three. You will have a whole circle on the one, and you have a field circle on the three. Yeah? Okay. Now, so that's a set of numbers, and that I use a lot of this representation when I do a stop bracket and a hard bracket. Okay, so now I think we're on the same page. And the same thing, if I do the soft bracket on this side and the hard bracket on this side, so I said so from one to three, right? So it means that I included one on my set, right? One to three, I included one on my set, but I do not include it three, right? So if you draw a picture, the number line, you will do a line between one to three, but you will put the circle with holes on three, but you will do a fielded circle on one. That good? Anyone in the back okay? Yes? I'm sorry, this is still loading. I'm not sure what's going on, but I will put up the what I scribbles here and I put up on all, all my usually all my scribbles that I do during the lectures I also put up on canvas. So I will have the scribble that I prepare and then put up on the, uh, on the canvas for you as well. Okay, if you, um, you know, but this is about imagination now, but don't worry because your lecture notes contain all of this and I'll put up the scribble of all I've just talked about as well. Okay. Um, yeah, so you, what we talk now, you should be able to do all those questions in the lecture note. So in the lecture note, if you look at that, it has those exercise question that come with like, ask you to select A, B, C, D, right? So I will also put the solution of that on my scribbles on Canvas, but I want you to try to do it yourselves as well. But all that we talk about now, you can do those questions. So, so far, do you have any question about the set, about the way we write number set, or anything about you know, the implication and why it versus? Anything at all? Not, no question is a silly question, and don't worry. No? Okay, so the next um, topic is about functions. So what is the function? Okay, we, we're talking about function. Now, you see function before, right? So give me an example of the function that you know. That is called what? Quadratic equations, right? When you talk like, you know, that's a quadratic function, right? And what else do you know? What other function? You've seen it before. And this is called? Linear function. What else do you know? Come on. Just talk, you know. Have fun, enjoy, talk. What else, what other function you know? We have plenty of times here. Yes, and that was that function called? Exponential function, and you heard about exponential function a lot over the COVID times. Exponential um, growth, right? So that is basically come from the exponential function. What other function do you know? What? Yeah, what's it that called? It's logarithmic function. Yep. What else do you know? Um, 
I should bring a chocolate, right? And then I will, you know, generate more conversation. I'll bring chocolate, right? Don't next time. Yeah, yes, the cubic function. What else? Thank you. Yes, you have the trigonometric function, sine x cos x tan x. What else? Yeah, so that is an invert function. Okay, so we talk about invert. So we'll, we'll do invert function the following next week. Okay, what else do you know? Yes, yes, hyperbolic function. Okay, hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cos, hyperbolic tan. And then we'll also do invert hyperbolic psi, hy invert hyperbolic cos, and invert hyperbolic tan as well. So you know, you know about fun you, you've seen function before. So basically function is a relationship. Right? Function is a relationship between the two numbers. Now in this course, we are only gonna do a function, okay, of y as a function of x. So x is your x is what? X is independent variable. Right, but y is a function of x. So y is a dependent variable because y depends on x. Okay. So if you're not sure what is that, you can think of x is your output. I mean, sorry, x is your input. Okay? X is your input. Y is your output. Right? So a function map one input to exactly one output. Right, so the function is a relationship that map exactly one output to one input to one output. So let's say a function, my function is a linear function, say y is equal to x. Okay, so this is a linear one function, y is equal to x, that's my linear function. So when, and then I can say that now, we have to talk, when you talk about x, we have to talk about domain and range, right? So, but before that, so just think of x is my input, y is my output, right? Now, the reason we need to know set, because you need to restrict yourself, we have to talk about the domain, okay? And the range of this function. So the domain of the function, okay? So x, we map x to y, right? So domain, is where the, your input sit in. Okay, you, you draw a picture. So this is my set A. I'm mapping set A to set B. Okay, I'm mapping set A to set B with some function f. Right, so I can say that my function is mapping the element of set A to the element of set B. So for example, I can say that y equal to x. Now I can restrict my, then you will talk about the domain of this linear function. x can be anything, right? Because we, y equal to x. x can be anything and this function is still valid. Right, so and then when y is mapping to x, x is mapping to y, so this y can be anything that come from this mapping but let's just say that if I'm talking about a quadratic function, y is equal to x squared. Right, so this is a quadratic function. So I'm mapping one. So it's a map, okay, x can be anything again. Right, x can be anything again because x squared, so it is still making this relationship, x is valid, no matter what the values of x I put in y equal to x squared, that still be valid, right? So when I put x equal to one, it map to one. When I map x equal to minus one, it's still going to one. But that's okay, because I say one input map to one output, right? So an output can be the same number there, okay? But I can't just say that one map to two, and one also map to three. That's not a function. But what you say, what, do you get what I mean? A function has to be a, it has to be a relationship that one input generate one output. 
So I can't map one to two and one to three at the same time. That is not a function, right? But if I go map from one to one, minus one to one, it's okay because there's still one input to one output. Yeah. Now, how do you check? If I have a graph, how do you check if you have a function? Okay, now, draw a circle in your head first. Draw a circle in your head. A circle has a formula. X, let's just say a circle of radius one. Right, x squared plus y squared equal to one, right? Now, if you draw a circle in your head, now one value of x. Yes, that's right. If you talk about draw a circle in your head and you pick a value of x and you draw a vertical line, okay, and you can see that this vertical line cut two points on this circle. You draw a picture in your head, you have a circle, and you pick a, pick a value of x, and you draw a vertical line. Okay, at this point x, there's a two values of y. Right, so like from like, you know, you draw a circle, you pick the point, and it's the top values of y here, and the bottom values of y. Okay, so which means that one values of x produce two values of y, right? So equation of the circle is not a function, okay? Because one values of x cannot, should not be producing the two values of y. But if you're just looking at half a circle, okay, if you're just looking at half a circle, could be the upper half or the lower half, right? This is the thing, thing about the upper half of the circle. If you just pick a value of x, okay, only the upper half of the circle, and you draw that vertical line, one value of x only corresponded to one value of y, right? So it means that equation of the upper half of the circle is a function. Okay. So all the function that you talk about, the linear function, hyperbolic function, trigonometric function, log function. If you draw a graph, right, and you draw that vertical line, you see that one values of x only corresponding to one values of y. Okay, and that's a function. Okay, now when you're talking about a function, now we talk about the domain, right? So the domain, or we call it a natural domain, Right, it's gonna be the value, a set of the values of x that make that function valid. Now, if I said about logs of x, y equals to logs of x, this is a logarithmic function, okay? What is the domain for that? What is the values of x that make, make this function valid? That is your domain. So for, when I talk about logs of x, what is the domain of that function? Thank you. So x cannot be all the number now because we have logs of x. And inside the log, okay, it has to be a positive number and it can't be zero. So I can write using my set notation as zero, comma, infinity, and a soft bracket. Of, okay, so it can be zero, a soft bracket, okay, zero, comma, infinity, and a soft bracket. When I do a soft bracket, when you talk about infinity or minus infinity, you need to use a soft bracket, okay? Because infinity is keep going, you don't know where it is. So we use a soft bracket when you talk about infinities, right? So that's a domain for log x. X can be anything that greater than zero, can't be zero itself. What about a function that I said y is equal square root of x minus one. So the x minus one inside square root, what is the domain of that function? Greater inside the square root. 
No, we talk about a real number here. When you talk about function, when we, okay, I should mention that when we talk about function, we only consider here in this course a real value function, a real function, okay? So when you do later on, when you do complex, no, complex analysis, so you talk about some other things, other function that may involve imaginary numbers, but when we talk about this course, we're only gonna talk about the real numbers. Okay, so the domains will be a subset of the real number set. Now, what anyone said before, you said square root of x minus one, what's it your domain? X greater than one, what do you think of that? Yes, correct. So because inside the square root, but you, you've got, you know, if it is one point, you get 0.5. Okay, so we should good. Um, better than zero, of course. Um, so why is that? Because inside the square root, it can be zero, right? So therefore, inside the square root of x minus one, so x minus one have to be greater than or equal to zero, or equal to zero, right? Inside the square, inside the, I mean, the square root sign can be zero. So that's why it also involves zero, involve one as well. So you say, is that clear? Now I'll do some more um, example later on when we have this, but today probably not, but next week, I mean on Friday, I'll do some more example about domain and range. Okay, one more. Um, exponential function e to the x. What is the domain of this exponential function? What is the set, what is x, e to the x? A function is the exponential function e to the x. What is the domain of this function? What is the values of x that it can be to make this function valid? You see that, is this all real numbers? Okay, because all real numbers make this exponential function valid. It can be negative, it can be positive, it can be um, rational, irrational. It still make the exponential function valid. Now, that is the domain, right? But when we talk about range, range is something that is an output, right? Sometimes, like for example, the exponential function, the range of it will be, you know, our real numbers as well. But for some of the function that we're talking about, it's not clear. So when you talk about range, I encourage you to draw a picture, right? Because like for example, if we're talking about a, um, if you have the lecture notes with you, you'll probably see this, like a parabola, right? If I draw a parabola, say that, okay, y is equal to x times two minus x. Okay, so this is a parabola upside down. Okay, parabola upside down. So just think of, uh, just, 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 just think of any parabola, okay? If you have a parabola function, and just think of this parabola upside down here, okay? The range of it is the values of y. Right? So if you talk about a parabola, which is the quadratic function, the, any values of x, okay, is a domain. Okay, the domain can be any real numbers. But when you talk about the range of this parabola function, you look at the graph, right? And then you see the values of y. And when you're looking at the domain, you see the values of x on the x-axis. Okay, when you're looking at the range, you see the values of y. Say if I had a parabola function and when I draw it, right, it's going up to y equal to one. Okay, the parabola upside down here, it's going from one downward, right? So then I said that the range of this function will be from one to infinity, right? Because you're looking at the y values. When you're looking at the range, you're looking at the y values, and this is a parabola upside down, okay? The maximum is at 0.1. So when you're looking at the y values, the range of this parabola function is one to infinity, okay? And or if I look at the parabola upside, you know, like parabola's up, right? And then I draw a parabola, say, it's this, you know, the bottom bit touch one here, Right, this is my parabola. 
Now, your ranges for that function will be 1 to infinity. Right? Before, if you have a lot upside down, 1 to minus infinity. If it upward, the range will be looking at the y section, y axis, and from 1 to infinity. Now, going back, sorry, uh, going back to exponential function again, I said something wrong before. Anyone want to correct me? What is the range of the exponential function? Again, that's almost correct. So, yes, I think that's correct, isn't it? Because if you have exponentials of zeros is one, and if it's exponentials of small numbers, yeah, that's right. So it's y from zero to infinities, right? So the domain can be any values of x, but the range is of the exponential function is zero to infinities. Okay. What about size of x? Size of x. What is the domain of size of x? Any real numbers is the domain of x, domain of psi. What about the range? Uh, now, everyone see that? If you don't know why it's minus one to one, draw the picture, right? Draw a psi picture, right? Psi of zero is zero, right? And then it go boop, 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 like that, right? And the, the graph, the curves, is always bound between minus one and one. Okay, so that's why it's a sign and cos, right? The domain is minus, the domain is, can be anything, but the range is minus one and one. Okay, so we, talk, we will talk a bit more about psi cos 10 in the next lectures. Okay, so um, we nearly finished here. I'm just gonna touch on a few other functions like polynomial functions. Now, you're talking about linear function and quadratic function, cubic function over there, but actually this is called polynomial function, right? So if you're looking at the lecture note, the polynomial function is like when I talk about y equal to x, y equal to one plus x plus x squared, right? Or y equal to one plus x plus two times x squared plus three times x cubed, so on and so forth. So the polynomial function is Okay, so you have a lecture note, that's good, but if you don't, it's just say the polynomial function is like, you have the coefficient a n, right? So for example, you can have a zero plus a one times x, right? Plus a two times x squared, plus a three times x cubed, plus a four times x to the power of five, plus a six times a to the power of six, so on and so forth. Okay, so that is a polynomial function so you can, you can write as a summation, okay, from n, from zero to infinity of a n, x to the power of n. Now, when I said about this power x to the power of n, when you talk about polynomial function, it had to be an integer, okay? Because when you, usually you see about like, y equal to x, y equal to x squared, y equal to three times x cubed. Okay, with polynomial function, the order is an integer. No, so, sorry, the order is the natural numbers. Polynomial function, the order of it is the natural numbers. So when you have constant function, right, so you have the order is zero. But for example, I have f of x equal to a naught, this means that's a constant function. It's a polynomial function of order zero. Polynomial function of order one is like, for example, y equal to one plus x as a linear function because the highest numbers of n is one. Okay, so that's a linear function, it's order one. So the order n is x to the power of n. So the um, quadratic functions so like you have the highest order is two. So for example, y equal to x squared is polynomial of order two. Y equal to x cubed, polynomials of order three. 
Okay, the high orders is what is that polynomials orders is called. But it has a special name, like for example, I talk about consent function, linear function, quadratic function, cubic functions. Okay, those are special names of the polynomial function of order 0, 1, 2, and 3, respectively. And you've seen polynomial function before, and we'll talk about it later on as well. Now, and the other function that you know, you've seen it already, is the power function. Now, the power function, like you can write in generally as xk, constant k times x to the power of n, right? But in here, the power function, this power of n here, can be any numbers in real, set of real numbers. Okay, what is polynomial? x to the power of n, n have to be an integer and had to be a natural numbers, but when you're talking about the power function, k times x to the power of n, that n there can be anything in real numbers. It can be negative, it can be positive, it can be rational, irrational numbers. Okay, that, that's the difference between the polynomial function and the power function. And then you have an exponential function. But when you talk about exponential function, you'll, m most of the time you see e to the power of x, right? So it can be basically k, constant k, times e to the power of x. Or it doesn't need to be e at all. It can be any constant. So I can write it as exponential function as k times b to the powers of um, another constant, say a times x, right? So the base of that doesn't need to be a, it can be any constant, can be any numbers, okay, so that's an exponential function, okay, so it can be b, it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so b to the, let's say 3 to the power of x, that is still an exponential function, but you, most of the time you see more when you use that e, that special number e to the power of x, but in general, the exponential function doesn't need to be a, it just be some constant to the power of x, and we call that an exponential function. Okay, and I think, and then when we come back on Friday, we will do a bit more on the trigonometric functions, and I hope that would work, and I feel sorry for the lecture after me as well. Okay, um, you know, I know this is early because uh, I, don't, I didn't have to write, so I only talk, so we finish it now. Any things in particular that you want me to go through and talk to you about, so if you're not sure, come down. I've got plenty of time here for you to come down and have a chat to me. But anyway, all the information that I talk about, the introduction of the courses, right, the slide that I prepare, I will put on the canvas as well, and the scribble that I prepare, it will also be in the canvas as well, okay? So, if you have a look at the canvas, go and explore yourself. Okay, so now we'll set up in modules, the Natalie scribble, and my scribble will be there. Okay. And the course outline and the info slides will be with the course outline. Okay, sorry about the lecture today and hope you know your imaginary, you, ima you have your imaginations. Yeah, yeah, you can have combined those. I put that. Yeah, so it's just all the lectures yes. combined, nothing yes. else. Yeah. Nothing else. Right. We, did, we only need that, but I probably should talk about our right. Yeah, yeah nice. and the thing is, if you need extra material, there's a book that I mentioned um, in the yeah, canvas. Yeah, I saw that. You can Thank you. go and get that extra Thank you. Which is up. You don't need to buy them. There's a lot of copies in the library. Oh, yeah. So you okay. need a book. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, yes. So in the, in the midterm and final exam, is there no calculators? No calculator, but you can bring a summary sheet. You will see that if you go into the, you will see the question that are in the workshop or the quizzes. You don't need number crunching. It's basically just the ideas and you solve it and you don't even need to, you know, to find out I exactly. Do, I can barely do mental math, so I've never done it, so. Yeah, no, you can write it out. It's just, you'll see, okay? So, yeah. When I didn't get, we didn't get to do the equation in the lectures, and so you will see that, you know, it's not, you don't need, the calculator. So like huge numbers. Actually. No, no, we don't have a, we don't do a huge number. We just do like 
you know, it's just the steps of, yeah, you'll be fine. We'll go to, do, we do some more exercise question during lecture, you see that you don't need the calculator. Thank you. Yeah, and, but you need summary sheet. Summary sheet. You need to write whatever you need in summary sheet and that will help you. Uh, what did you say your room was again? Where? 222. SR222. SR222. Which is, it's a mess in that building, but I'm yeah. sure you'll find them. Ah, sure, you can use that map and you can, you can ah, find it. Ah, okay, the loss on campus. Yeah, it's on campus, you just top up the room and just take straight okay, to it. So, yeah, yeah. all good. Oh, cool, yeah, 222. Two, two. Yes. I was just wondering, is that where they come from? We don't have summary sheets. What is the summary sheet? Summary sheet is like a sheet sheet. Okay. But you can write your formula, your information that you that you think you need to do an exam. Okay, and then right. that, that's going to be checked by... Yeah, the, oh, the demonstrator will check that it, you know, double-sided. You didn't bring A3, you didn't bring A4, and you, you know, you write. Basically, anything you need. Yeah, so because I don't give you the calculator, but so you need to, like, for example, side of 30, side of 60 degrees, what any formula, what any rule that you need to do the equation, if you think you need it. Because actually, you don't need it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, my question is about the sets. Yes. Uh, why have one in the set multiple times? It doesn't make any difference. Yes, but it's like, just... Like, why would you have one twice in the set? Then? Yeah, so that's the, that's the way that the set would be written sometimes, you know, like you used to say that a set is the, you know, like I am talking about the output, uh, if I'm talking about the output of a set, right? If I was to do like x square, the output will be, if I put one in, the output, I put input in, I mean input as one, the output will be one. Right, and the input is minus one. The output will all be one yeah. in that set. That's why sometimes they have multiple numbers of the okay. same number in that set. Yeah. But if you're talking about the number of element itself, you don't count the one that repeated. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But sometimes, yeah, the output had more than one of the same numbers. Is, yeah. it, is it like when you're collecting like single pair data? You only yeah, get, something you get like that as ones, well. You only get one. Yeah. Data point, but you have like an increased reliability. Yeah. Reliability is a separate thing. Yeah. That's, so yeah, that's, you can think of it that way as well. Yep, collecting of data. Yep. Okay, and then also, uh, I think it will probably get confusing because the way you say questions sounds a lot like equations. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. So, yeah, I will try to make it like clearer. Uh, it's yep. a simple question of polarity. If you have an exponential function, yep. uh, no, I believe it was the point in, in where the um, exponential could only be a natural number? Yes, yeah, the it's not, cotton it's order. Not called exponential function. Say if it was 0 0.5. You mean polynomial be. and power function, right? The oh, the polynomial function? So if you yeah. just had, if that um, n X. was 0 0.5, that just wouldn't be an exponential function? No, that, no, that would not be a polynomial function, but it will be a power function. Okay, so it's just a, a like a definition thing. So yeah, it's yeah. a definition thing. Okay. Yeah. That was, thank you. Yeah. We don't have any quiz or task. No, no workshop, no quiz this week. No task, yeah. Everything starts next week. This week we just didn't get to know each other and just learning about the basics. Yes? Um, is there like a, I can't actually see it on Canvas on my phone. Um, is there any recommended textbook? It's on the Canvas. It's on Canvas. If you're looking at the yeah. book. Yeah, it just doesn't show it on a oh, okay. phone. It's different on okay. phone to laptop. It Do you have the app or no. the Canvas app? Yeah, grab um, the Canvas app, that does help. Um, textbooks. Yeah, you got it? There? Yeah. Take a photo. Yeah, so you need to... Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so you just got to go to... Um, it's actually in its own section. Yeah. Canvas. And those books, are, you don't need to buy them. They've got plenty of copies in library. Okay. Okay, and the, all the lecture notes, all of the notes from week one to week... 13 or 12 actually, is on that already. And I put the combined version as well. So usually you only need the lecture notes and the extra exercise question and the task books is also on Canvas already. And then workshop sheet is another thing that you need. So workshop sheet, task book, and then lecture notes, that's all you need. But if you need an extra material just to entertain yourself, extra question, go to those textbooks. Okay, cool. Yeah, Thank those you. three textbooks are great. Thank you. Yes? Um, I have a reasonable adjustment plan. Yes, is that James? Jordan. No, Jordan. I haven't got it from you. No, can I haven't emailed you yet. Yeah, yeah, I can email that through. Yes. Um, how similar is this course to. Because uh, I did Open Foundation last semester with uh, EV Math 309. Yeah. 
So you, EPE Mat 3 or 9, will have some section that is similar to this course, yeah. but some of the content will not be in EP 3 or 9 because yeah. you won't have complex number there, right? Do you have we complex did, yes. number? Do you have vectors, mm -hmm. lines and planes, and the intersection of lines and planes? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Have a look at this EP 3 or 9, EP hash or uh, EP? EP Mat uh, 3 or 9. Three or nine, um, U or N. Let's have a look for that. So, um, let's see, so, do you do complex numbers? You do a root of complex numbers, you do a region of the complex numbers, regions? Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not exactly, because looking at this, I'm not exactly sure, yeah. but majority um, of that, you know, similar because you talk about differentiation. We do implicit differentiation. Um, we do, we do both. Um, chain rule, yes, I see chain, chain rule. Chain rule, quotient rule. Yeah. Um, what about the implicit differentiation? Um, Where you can't write a function as explicitly and you have to do implicit differentiation. Yes, yes. Okay. And what about the, you know, like the maximum, the minimum, the global, max, global, min, local, max, local, min? Yes. Points of inflection uh, yeah. and stuff like that, yes. Limits. Limits, yep. Yeah. So, and then um, you so derive the differential equation. You derive the differentiation rule from the first principle? Yes. Okay. So, so uh, what was it? Uh, so, we obviously do the first principle, which is yeah, uh, the limit is of, um, yep. well, the first one we learned was just, um, yeah, that's interesting. Sine x over x equals one, yeah. and then um, obviously you get um, yeah. the definition of d differentiation, which is um, f of x yeah. uh, just, yes. plus h um, minus f of x over h. Yeah. All sorry, all over h. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's this, that that's a. But looking at this, they didn't talk about complex numbers. Complex numbers. Uh, it's not in here, but um, you might have done it in the previously. Is that that's good? Complex numbers. Yeah. So not this. They don't have uh, complex numbers in vectors. In this. Um, complex numbers. Okay. Yeah. Yep. The division of the complex numbers. Yeah. Multiplication of the complex numbers. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So uh, and the root, and then the, the more theorems. Sorry. The more theorems. Yes, yeah. Um, the root of the complex numbers, yeah. So in that case, you know, you'll be fine in this yeah. course. Yeah, I was yes. just wondering because... It's probably going to be some things that similar and something that you haven't done in that, but it's probably going to be, you know, yeah. pretty much you'll be fine with the yeah. course. Um, Why do you do EP maths? Why don't you do... Um, um, what's your background? Um, so... I was a mechanic and a chef. Uh, I dropped out of high school, I, but I did do extension mathematics. Mm -hmm. um, you did extension what? Extension one and extension two. Extension one, yes. That okay, but what in that case you can go straight to eleven ten. This is not. This is not this eleven ten, but yes. you know you because you do an extension one, uh, but it's a I while didn't ago. I high school. I dropped out of high school, oh. so I had to do a foundation course to get into my degree. Uh, okay. So my, you know. The best thing for me was to go into. Yeah. Um, I see. I did math 309. Yeah. Um, EP math 309. Yeah. And EP is uh, 152 and 252. In that case, you have plenty of um, backgrounds already. Yeah. 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 I was just wondering because. Um, the thing is, you know, I would. Like, I just had to look through the course outline and it's, it seems very similar to. It's, it seems very similar, same, but same. because I look at that and then it doesn't mention complex numbers and vectors and, yeah. and a few other topics, but. Um, um, I mean, vectors. And then you, you do we, didn't, we did very touch on it, but not a lot, I don't think. We do dot uh, product, cross product, like, um, you know, you create the equation of plane and create. Uh, like Cartesian of line. plane, yes, yes. We yeah. did graphing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but do you do um, like equation of line from vectors? Yes. You construct equation of line, equation yes. of plane from vectors? Yes, okay. uh, using point gradient form and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did so, that. Um, so in that case, 
you know, like you should be doing 1120. But you know what? If you try to get matching to 1120, and if they just only look at the cost outline, it's not. It doesn't say that you've done vectors and complex numbers. Yeah. They probably suggest um, you to do 1110 anyway. Yes. Well, it's a prerequisite for 1120. Yeah. Um, unless you can prove that you had done um, topic that equivalent to 1110, but in your case. Um, because you come from Open Foundation, they probably put you to do 1110 anyway. Yeah, exactly. But um, I'm sure you do well. I mean, you'll get a even, stronger foundation. But, but they don't even count Math 309 as part of the Math Placement Test to get into the... So, so what, next time email me. Yeah. Because I have a chance to override, I have the right to override students if they... So I can, for example, I can look at those and then I say, yeah. okay. I mean, it doesn't matter now. I've done the Math Placement it's Test. It's easy anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. But yeah. So next cause, time, because the prerequisites, like, you'd, well, I would have thought that. No, the because you said. I, I, I was I was told by. Um, you got you got to realize that not all the students are strong from the Open Foundation from enabling program. So that's yeah. why we had the math placement test for the students to make sure that yeah, they can cope at yeah. eleven ten. Well, I mean. So that's why you've got to do. Surely it would be ba like I I thought at least it could have been based off the mark of. Yeah. What you, you know, yeah. what your final exam was, which is annoying because, um, I mean, I'm assuming you know Scott Cipher. No. No, you don't know Scott Cipher. He's not in the math department. He is the math, in the math department. No, you're not in the math school of math and mathematics, the schools of information. And I'm not, I don't know if you're probably in the enabling program, but because we're teaching by different cohorts, it's yeah, different, okay. the staff are different. You're in the enabling program, the yeah. open foundations. You have yeah. a different staff to the university staff yeah. that doing the maths. Yeah, okay. Because um, I mean, I think he runs the yeah. weird um, math. Yeah. So game. we have it's a it's the things about the, the the university's program because you've got a lot of people who are doing teaching repeatedly. Of course. Yeah. And the funny things aside, um, you know, you should be doing math one or two instead of that EPS because you know they do a, a lot more. Like, well, stop. But anyway, you've done mean, it now, it's all good. Well, they don't offer 1002 in Open Foundation yeah, because no. it's not a. Because to do anything a thousand, like a thousand beyond, yeah. you've got to be in a degree. Yeah, that's obviously. right. But I am also studying uh, math, so I'm doing mechanical engineering. Uh, but anyway, you're in this course now, and I'm sure you will do well because of all of the stuff that you've done for yeah. that, from that course. Um, and like, I'm guessing, obviously, today notwithstanding, um, most of, every, pretty much everything is going to be recorded and you're just handwriting most of the yeah, stuff. Yeah, today will be recorded too, be, but be, be, it was just, just a blank. voice. Yeah. 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 Um, everything will be recorded as to be available in Panopto. Even today, lectures will be recorded in Panoptos as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the lecture script also be on Canvas as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I was going through, I mean, a, the course notes, and I, I'm, I'm very comfortable with all that stuff because vectors, while we didn't touch on it in Math 309, yep. we did do quite a bit of vectoring in uh, physics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was um, fundamental physics or classical physics, so obviously mm -hmm. vectors are a big thing there. Yeah, that's right. Um, You've used vectors in physics all the time. And I am also a physics major. Oh. Right. So you do a double degree? I am, yes.
That's a good point. I actually am not responsible for that quiz. Yeah. So, um, did it, when you did the quiz, was there a contact? So, look, you know what, send me an email and I'll send it to the right yeah. person. Just send me an email and let, let me know yeah, what things were wrong and yeah. I'll forward it to the lab manager and he'll be able to figure out who's, who actually can edit that. Thanks. No worries. Hello? Hello? Hello.
So of course the technology's crashed and I'm going to have to try a different way to share my laptop screen to here, so I don't know how that will work with recording, but let's hope for the best. <laughs>